Welcome to TRS Clips. It's for all you guys whose attention spans are reduced because of short form content. This is the highlights channel. Enjoy the video and make sure you consume a bunch of highlights. Binge watch TRS Clips. How did like the rest of the world, which is the Roman Empire, parts of Africa, the Gulf, uh, maybe even Russia, how did all of them look at the Indian civilization? Like, was it truly as advanced as we're told? Because one thing I've learned about a lot of historians is everyone has kind of their own opinions on things. Mm. But I'd like to just, I'd like to know yours as well. See, there was not that much contact with India because India was quite far off from, say, Europe or China. And it was uh, walled off by the Himalayas and huge seas, etc. And, uh, and the Iranian uh, Zagros Mountains and all of that, Hindu Kush. So there was not that much contact. Uh, but there was also some contact. There were some Indian traders who would go into the Central Asia. There was uh, so uh, uh, Indians had also kind of become more inward looking. They were not uh, because of the nature of the geography. Yeah, uh, they were isolated, and and India was a kind of a dwipa, you know, an island kind of. I believe they started looking eastwards. Yeah. So what happens is that India really uh, takes off um, with the arrival of Buddhism. Because as the Buddhism is a more of a missionary religion. See, some religions are not that missionary. Buddhism was a more missionary, so it used to send out monks. It, uh, a lot of people got converted in Central Asia, in China, etc. And that also, and by this time also, uh, the Greeks had arrived on our borders, thanks to Alexander. So there was a lot of interaction with the Greeks, and the Greeks had a whole civilization because of Alexander's conquest, stretching across the Middle East into Europe, North Africa, etc. So, thanks to the Greek kingdoms that came up, thanks to the Buddhists. And of course, it's not to say that uh, there was not Hindu, uh, what we today call Hindu. I mean, Hindu is a modern term, relatively speaking, comes from Persia. Let's call it Vedic civilization. Uh, this civilization uh, also had a spread uh, both to Southeast Asia with our traders, just as Buddhism spread to Southeast Asia from India. But also, uh, uh, see, our, uh, also, we had a partner civilization. See, Persia is actually India's partner. We, we are actually two brothers from the same mother. Okay. That is, the two closest languages are uh, ancient Persian, which is called, you know, Zendavesta and Old Sanskrit. So, Old Persian and Old Sanskrit come from the same root, the Proto-Indo-European language. Is it, this, uh, is it the same as like how Zoroastrianism... And Indian cultures have a lot of parallels. The re this is the reason because they come from the same root. So actually, what was the Vedic religion originally? It was a fire sacrifice religion. There were no temples. People used to sit around a fire, have grass on which you would be seated and pour sacrifices into the fire. The smoke of the sacrifices would go to your ancestors and to the devas. Devas means the same word as deus in mm. Greek. The shining ones. The root is the same, Indo-European, old Indo-European. Devas is deus. And uh, it's going to your ancestors. So that's why Iran's religion, ancient religion, was also a fire religion. Because they come from the same source. What happens is that a prophet emerges in Iran called Zarathustra. We don't know the exact date. It is, could be as early as 1000 BC. We don't know. Is this Zoroaster? Zoroaster, which we now know as Zoroaster. So Zarathustra was, a, uh, was actually a predecessor for all the Semitic religions. By which I mean, he was a predecessor for Judaism, for Islam and for Christianity. Why? Because he's the first guy who says, I'm a prophet, a kind of prophet, a messenger from God. He says that there are two forces, good and evil in the world. Yeah. But they come from the same source. The original Zoroastrians believed that there was a person in the sky called Ahura Mazda. This word is very interesting because Ahura comes from Asura, mm. the same root. In Persian, the word S could not be pronounced and it was replaced by H everywhere. So Asura becomes Ahura. That means you can imagine that their original religion before Zoroastrianism, hmm. no, there's nothing original, but their earlier religion, let's put yeah. it this way, was similar to Vedic Hinduism. Because Asuras are in Vedic Hinduism, and their gods also have the similar names. Uh, Mitra, uh, Varuna, uh, you know, so they have the same kind of gods, Indra, that we in India's Vedic civilization had. The early a yep. Vedic civilization. I think we're talking about the seed religion, which was common to both India exactly. and, Persia. and Persia. So they are actually like our brothers in the sense, in that sense, civilizationally speaking. Yeah. Mm. So, so the thing is, and this is why, if you notice, all these Mughals also, because they were Persianized, 
they, were, they came from Persian culture. They're very interested in astrology. Astrology is not common in the Islamic world, but it is very common in Central Asia. Why? Because it is the influence of Iran and it is the influence of India. And they both believed in the Mahurat, in the Shubdin, in the skies, in the celestial uh, bodies. Uh, uh, and everything would be done according to that, predictions would be made. And that's why they had very good relationships, the Mughals, with the uh, Hindu pundits, astrologers, with, um, with even some um, Hindu sects like the Goraknathis, etc. So even when Zoroaster comes, he doesn't completely destroy the old religion. Because nothing comes out of nothing. Everything has a past from which a new thing evolves. So he keeps the fire religion, the fire sacrifice, the, but he transforms it. That's why the Parsis also have fire temples mm. where the fire is burning. Mm. Fire is very critical. For us also in India, Agni is very important. The sacrifice to Agni. In fact, Agni is so important that no uh, ceremony can happen, not marriage can happen, not Death can happen, not uh, any of the sacrifice can happen without Agni. In fact, Agni is so important that North India would not exist without Agni. Mm. Because when the Aryans came originally, this whole Gangetic Valley, this is another part of our uh, environmental history that we don't know. The whole Gangetic Valley was covered in thick forest. And, uh, you know, hunter-gatherers or ancient men, uh, even nomadic people, did not have the power to chop down millions of acres of forest. So what would they do? They would set it on fire. We burned down millions of acres of forest to make it into farmland, mm. rich farmland. And that's how the indo gangetic Valley was cleared. There were two paths that the Aryans took. One was called the Uttarapath, starting from whatever, Punjab, Haryana, stretching up to Bengal. The other is called the Dakshinapath. That is, again, starting from Punjab, Haryana, but coming down through Gujarat into Maharashtra and South. So th these were the two routes that they took. But this route was relatively okay. You know, there was not that much vegetation. But that one required Agni. And that's why Agni is so important. So let's get back to Zarathustra because he is the dude. He is the original man. He is the first prophet. Mm. As I explained to you. In fact, the Jews and the Christians and the Muslims owe to him. Because he is the first guy who is saying, look, I'm, I have brought a message from God. Um, God is Ahura Mazda, as I said. And the story begins from there because it's actually Asura Mazda. Because they don't have the word. As I said, Sindhu becomes Hindu. Mm. The name comes from Persia. Yeah. Because the river Sindhu, they could not pronounce the S. So they changed it to H. Similarly, Ahura Mazda. Now, Ahura Mazda is this god, but he has two forms, two uh, natures. In the original Zoroastrianism. I, I have to give some context to the listeners here. Sure. Um, so basically, if you study things like the Vishnu Puran or Shiv Puran, they talk about Devas and Asuras as being uh, two enemies. So again, I've tried digging up the truth through the podcast. And what I've figured is Devas, as we call it, were probably a set of kings or uh, leaders of tribes on this side, which is geographically India. And Asuras could have been kings on that side of the Indus, which is very likely Persia. And even if you actually study the Asura culture in the Puranas, you'll see that even they prayed to the same gods like Shiva, like Vishnu, Brahma, etc. So my reading here is that for us as Indians, but they were the enemies and for them as Persians, we were the enemies. And you know, even if you read the Vishnu Puran, eventually the Asuras and the Devas also work together. But let me just clarify one thing. Uh, Shiva is not a Vedic God. Mm. Shiva is a God who emerges later. He's, uh, therefore, there are, you know, Pashupati, that seal that has been found, yeah. which, which we call the Pashupati seal, as the image of that yogi with the uh, bull's horns. Yeah, yeah. And we say that that might have been, say, a proto Shiva. Mm. But he's not found in the Vedic pantheon, the Rig Vedic pantheon. The closest we can find is Rudra as a cognate of Shiva. That is, we find Indra there. We find Agni, we find Mitra, but we do not find uh, Shiva, etc. So, um, and even Vishnu is not the way we imagine Vishnu. Vishnu actually is a, in the original story, is a dwarf. Uh, divine one with, who works with the gods. So Deva, the, uh, the roots of Deva, the etymological roots, comes from the same root as Deus. Deus in Greek meaning God. Devas meaning, Devas also meaning the same thing, the shining ones. Devas mm -hmm. who give off light. And actually Asuras also uh, were a divine being. They mm -hmm. were not evil originally. In the later versions, they become uh, Asuras become evil, etc. So, Ahura Mazda, therefore, is not a bad, he's a good force, he's a god. Zoroaster is his 
profit zarathustra and he also is predicting the birth actually of a of a, a a messianic leader who will come after him born from a virgin so so you can see that that there the, the christian myth is already there in what zarathustra is saying wow and zarathustra is also saying that look there is good there is evil these are these two forces the the forces of light and darkness they fight with each other in creation and in the end of course light will win over also he talks about the day of judgment and he also talks about heaven and hell so he's given you the basic framework of judaism christianity and islam there's which year is this in roughly we don't know exactly could be around 1000 bce could be up and up or down a little bit um and so he's given us hell heaven and hell he has given us the day of judgment the basics of islam also the basics of christianity and judaism he has given us all of these things and it makes sense that the jews were actually slaves in babylon so they were exposed to this story uh, nebuchadnezzar the second had enslaved and taken them there and uh, cyrus the great freed them so they they were familiar with this story you see and therefore you can find fragments of that in their own versions and that's how they also write down the story they start the written scriptures appear only after that not before that zarathustra uh, uh once he emerges as a prophet uh, he changes iran's religion but not completely as i mentioned fire still continues to be an integral part of that religion and um, many of the rites are there after him this religion develops different sects two of the most prominent sects are manichaeism of zara of zoroastrianism manichaeism and mazdakism manichaeism believes again in two forces good and evil and they fight with each other and you see this good and evil is very interesting because the evil part that is uh, ahriman is the force of darkness and evil in in zoroastrianism he is actually the prototype of satan of devil shaitan he has exactly those qualities so you can see how this is coming into others other religions also from there right interesting and the good guy is actually another name for aura mazda the that is ordsman you know i don't know how, i don't know how to pronounce this name uh but is uh, uh so the, uh, and then you have these two forces of good and evil black and white that's why we say don't be manichaean when we say in english we mean don't see the world only in black and white mm. the world is gray it's not just black and white so but it comes from that uh, one of the sects of zoroastrian thank you for watching our team spends a lot of time curating playlists just for you so make sure you check out all the playlists that we've created on trs clips if you want to speed up your learning process